Uh, we'll start with Mark Weiser and let's go with Chip Towers after that. Mark. Hey, Todd, how are you? I'm good, Mark. How are you? Good, good. Thanks. Um, I, let me just start, I guess, with the offensive line. Um, I guess you guys are scrimmaging Saturday. You know, how do you expect to, since we haven't been able to watch practice, how, how do you expect to line them up with, with the first unit and, and kind of what decisions are still to be made as it relates to getting the best five, you know, with Erickson injured as well? Well, I mean, <clears throat> we have, you know, Schaefer that, that comes back as a returning starter and Jamari. Then you got Warren McClendon. And yet you've got a good number of, you know, talented young guys that are pushing those guys. So really in terms of the depth chart, it's a work in progress. I do anticipate seeing a good number of guys working with the ones and the twos. You know, you're talking about on the left side, you know, we're looking at Amarius and, and Xavier Truss as well. You know, on the right side, you know, we've had Tate over there along with, you know, you got Devin Willick, who's a talented young guy, Owen Condon, who's been here. And you've got, you know, Broderick, who continues to grow. So, you know, the good news is, is we practice all of them and we rotate them. So I'm excited to, to get to Saturday and see where we're at. It's, uh, you know, you go all the way through spring and you spend five weeks in pads and installing and guys get to a point they keep developing and then you have a break. It's, it's really an interesting dynamic in that you, all of a sudden you got May, June and July and you pop back up again. So you, you've got to get back into working the physical part of it. You know, it's one thing to be the mental, but then the physical part. Chip Towers. Uh, Todd, uh, you know, what did, you know, it's a simple, simplistic question, but, you know, the difference that a year makes, and not, not only just a year, but obviously last year was a COVID year, but you also have a returning starter at quarterback. I mean, how much of a difference do you believe that makes tangibly in what you're able to do on offense? Well, we're just so further ahead. And, you know, uh, forget even, let's just start with the staff, you know, being together for a year when we do game planning and guys make suggestions and we start talking through things, they get to know me a little bit better and it makes for a much easier working relationship in terms of those things. Then you go with the players and the terminology and, and I think that part of it missing spring and then the fall. And, and as I've said many a times, it's uh, the core of what you do football wise is the same in the NFL, blocking, tackling, doing it better than they do it. But systematically, the way you go attacking people is a little bit different. And uh, that took time. Obviously, the quarterback situation adds to that. And, uh, you know, I feel like a year later, I'm doing it better. I mean, that's that's what you're paid to do is to do it better, you know, than you did it last year uh, with the staff in terms of what we're doing offensively, in terms of how we're coaching our players, and then really honing in on who we want to be. All right, let's go with uh, Mike Griffith and Seth Emerson. Mike? Coach, you have some uh, unique talents there at the tight end position. Can you talk about some of those guys we've heard a lot about? Well, without a doubt. So you've got, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick, who, you know, played a lot of football for us last year is probably, you know, in terms of, I wouldn't say the most versatile, but in terms of trust is probably the biggest word with him with Fitz is you can put him at Y, you can put him in an F tight end, you can flex him out. Um, he's going to be diligent in the way he approaches it. And you can count on him. He's a, he's a true bulldog. Then you take, you know, Darnell Washington, who got here, you know, last year, <clears throat> and some of those things we saw later in the year, we just, we hadn't seen early in the year. You know, we don't go live, and when we did, and we didn't get him the ball to be able to see some of that ability, I wouldn't say down the field, but I'm talking about run after catch and some of those things. We knew that he'd be able to cover people up and develop that way, but he's a unique, he's a unique player. I don't, I don't really know other than to say he's unique in terms of his size and athleticism, you know, at 6'7", 280, I mean, and, and ball skills and can run and and he's only going to continue to get better. I mean, it's uh, he's only really scratched the surface. Then you got Brock Bowers, who is your consummate F, you know, be able to, you could hand the ball to him if you wanted to. And in his high school film, he played some fullback and in terms of route running and, and, and another guy that's a really diligent worker. I mean, he'll run himself into the ground, how hard he works and runs and competes. And so uh, we're really, really fortunate. 
you know, to have those three guys in the mix. And then you got Ryland Godey and Brett Scyther who are competing for playing time. But those three guys, you know, that's a, that's a pretty special room right now that we have uh, with the ability to utilize them and their skill set. Seth Emerson. Todd, in the grand scheme of things on offense, at, at the skill positions, you've got so much experience coming back and you want to build on what you were doing with JT last year. But that also means opponents have a lot of film on basically all your skill position guys and what you guys did do well last year. So how much of your offseason and preseason is finding that balance between leaning into what you do well, but also not being too predictable? Well, a great question. You, you do spend the off season when the season ends, you go through, all right, our cut ups and you look at it and say, where, what can I do better? Uh, what can the players do better? Where can we put them in a better situation to have success? Because the, ma the majority of our players here have a skill set, especially the skill guys that you can utilize doing something. Um, we just have to figure out what that is and where we can get them in those positions. And then you spend the off season, you know, heading into spring of evaluating what other people are doing, trying to stay on the cutting edge of what people are doing offensively and utilizing our personnel, which I thought we did a really good job of. But at the end of the day, the teams that are really good on offense do the same things and do it better than they do it. And they tweak some, but they constantly are, are looking for ways to improve, but they have a philosophy of what they do and they try to do it better than they do it. So you're right, having the film of what we do and how we do it, it's up to us to mirror our plays up so they can look the same uh, but appear different to the defense and put them in run pass conflicts with different ways that you're able to do that. So I'm excited about the direction we're headed and what we carried over from last year. Okay, let's go with Anthony Dasher and then Dean Leggy. Anthony. Yep. Hey, Coach, good to see you today. How quickly has Eric Gilbert adapted at wide receiver and as the OC? Uh, what, what's exciting about the different ways he can be used? Well, I think he's adapted well. Um, he's he's a he's a special talent because he's he's in the Brock Bowers mode and that he's athletic enough to play receiver, but big enough to do some things on the interior. Uh, he's a size matchup. He's a run after catch guy. He loves to play the game. So uh, you know, we're excited that uh, that he's part of our program. Dean Leggy. Hey, Todd. Uh, I guess. There have been reporting that Warren Erickson has missed some time. Have there? Can you confirm that? And then, secondly, have there been any other, you know, significant players who have missed practice time? Well, you guys are going to have to. I appreciate the question, Dean, but all those questions are going to go to Coach Smart. You know, in terms of injuries. All right, um, Roddy Nabolsi and Vance Levy. Roddy. Roddy, are you with us? I yeah, I was just had a, a mute and get you there. Uh, Coach, I hate, I hate to put you on the spot, but can you kind of tell us uh, who's your number two quarterback right now? Well, we're working through that right now. We left, we left spring with Carson, you know, as our number two quarterback, but we're working through that now. You know, with Brock, you know, it's hard to assess a freshman player that comes in in, in the spring, and we put a lot on those guys, and so – you know, right away, they're not able to really show their, their ability because they're processing so much. You know, that it slows down their feet, slows down some of those things. But there's been tremendous improvement there. Obviously, Stetson and, and Stetson has greatly improved. So we're still in the, in the process of evaluating that. And the next two scrimmages will have a lot to say with that uh, in terms of how we end up uh, going in the first game. with. But uh, I've been pleased with all four of them and especially the other guys and, and uh, you know, Stetson's to be commended because it hasn't been easy. You know, it hasn't been easy. You know, you go from being a starter to, hey, you're competing for other guys for even just the backup spot um, or the third spot. But uh, he's worked awfully hard, really intelligent. He has improved a ton. So we're, we're, we're fired up about the group. Fans? Hey, Coach. Uh, Coach Monk, and I asked Kirby uh, last week or Coach Smart last week about uh, – sort of the fall off and exp uh, explosive plays from the running back core. Uh, what can what can you as a coordinator do to kind of 
free those out, you know, for to get those long game changing. And then do you mind kind of running through how the running backs are doing? Thank you. Well, first off, uh, we've got an, an excellent group of running backs. I mean, all five can play here. Um, we do, Dell does a great job of keeping those guys fresh. Uh, they've been pretty selfless in terms of understanding, you know, that uh, probably benefits them to not have the wear and tear on them. Uh, obviously, we have to become more explosive in the run game. I think we were consistent for the most part. Obviously, we had a couple games there with Mississippi State in the bowl game where we didn't nearly run it as well as you would like um, to be able to control the game because you can't control the game if you can't run it. Uh, obviously, we got to do a better job of getting the ball in the perimeter because uh, there is more space out there. That'll help us. Obviously, formationally, we can do some things differently. Um, you know, and then there were some games that, you know, obviously – you know, the, the Kentucky game, we ran the ball well, but it was more in terms of five, six, seven, you know, four or ten here. But we, we definitely have to be more explosive. And, and you know that, Vance, that's how you win the game is to be explosive and not turn it over. So there's a balance. So you're exactly right. We've got to we've got to become more explosive in the run game. And and we have to do it without having a, uh, you know, a dual threat quarterback. You know, that that'll add to that as well. You don't get a uh, at times you, you may not get the QB draw or the scramble run or the, you know, or the, the zone read, but, but that's no excuse. We got good enough running backs. We, we definitely have to be more explosive. All right, let's go next to Allison Mastrangelo and then let's go to Jake Rowe after Allison. Allison. Hey, I just had uh, two quick questions. One of them, what has been the biggest growth that you've seen in JT Daniels from year one to year two? And then I just have a quick follow-up. Uh, the biggest growth, well, maybe I'll have a couple. One is obviously it's different when you come into the season as a starter. I think he's more comfortable with our players. So that, I think the second part is just he's very, very comfortable with the offense and uh, and his ability to change things at the line of scrimmage, to be able to do things that's player controlled, which he likes to be involved. And he just has a much greater command of what we want done, which is which is normal. I mean, it's normal that he came in, you know, had an injury. We were repping a lot of guys, didn't play till the end. Um, as we keep, you know, evolving what we do offensively, um, he really uh, appears to be in control of what we want done. And I was just curious, between last year and this year, is it easier this year compared to all the protocols and everything you had last year, or does it kind of feel like the same now with the Delta and everything else going on? Not a chance it's the same. No chance in hell it's the same as last year. I mean, just because of no spring, you know, the pandemic and not really knowing, you know, we, maybe at this point we don't know what the Delta variant, but back then we didn't have a vaccine. We didn't have some of the, what we think are ways to curb this. We didn't know if we were going to play, um, you know, as a team, you know, and as a society, we we're going through, you know, some social injustice and unrest. We had a lot of things that were thrown our way, not just the pandemic that I thought our players did a great job of handling. And uh, it's hard enough to win without distractions. And so, and everybody went through it. We're not the only ones. And, uh, but I really like where our, our team is at now and how they're working. Jake Rowe. Uh, Coach, I want to ask you about the wide receiver position. And, uh, you know, is there anybody – I know losing George there kind of opens the door maybe for more competition and, and some guys to step up. But is there anybody that's kind of turned your head, any pleasant surprises uh, this preseason? And who might those guys be? Well, <clears throat> you know, Jermaine Burton returns as a starter. you got Kyrus Jackson – you know, as a guy that's coming back, Marcus Roseme coming off injury. Those are the three guys coming back that have probably played the most football. A.D. Mitchell, we think is going to be a tremendous player here. You know, Arian Smith has a unique skill set, you know, that can really run. He's developing other aspects of his game. He is really quick and twitchy. So he's not somebody that is just a straight line track guy, but he is developing his traits. And there are days, you know, where you see flashes, I think, Justin Robinson has improved dramatically. You know, Jalen Johnson's going to add to that group. Lad McConkey's made some plays. So, you know, you lose one guy and 
it is what it is. You know, the other guys get a chance to step up and it's why you recruit players that have talent and you're moving guys around and we're just trying to find the best combination of guys uh, of which including, you know, you're talking about Eric and then, and then the tight ends. So, and we have the running backs, you know, we, we can't forget that we've got some really talented guys to potentially get multiple backs, you know, on the field at once. All right, next up, let's go to Brandon Sudge, then Steve Hummer, please. Hey, uh, Coach, I mean, over the spring and early on in the fall here, we've heard a lot of um, talk from Kirby and JT kind of about the relationship that the two of y'all have had as quarterback and coach. Um, what areas have you been able to see that that growth over the offseason in terms of how you guys are able to uh, connect on things and kind of have that uh, relationship, I guess, that is needed to have that um, uh, success on the field? Well, I think it's time. I think with any relationship, it takes time. I think as much as anything, it's, you know, over time, you get to know each other and, you know, how to, how to get someone to be their best as a player or as a human being. And so it just takes time for him to understand what we want to do offensively, what we need him to do with the team in terms of leading, in terms of being a coach on the field. So I think the biggest thing is just through the time and then obviously having success. I mean, that relationship is tied to success. I mean, we're, we're tied together. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, that relationship, the more success we have, the more fun it is. The less success we have, it's not that much fun. So the better he gets and the better I do it, the better the relationship is. And that's, that's everywhere I've ever been. Steve? Yeah, Coach, uh, JT had spoken a lot, uh, or spoken about working on his mental strength uh, a little bit. How have you seen that uh, kind of uh, translate into his everyday uh, presence there with the team, uh, be it presence in the huddle, his leadership abilities, what have you? You see it. I think I refer back to time. I think it's hard to just jump in there. Really wasn't here in the summer. He's not the starter. He's taking reps. He wasn't fully healthy yet. I do think that's much easier as when you become the starter, you're in front of them all the time. You're the one gathering guys to throw. That is a big part of it. People don't, are getting gathering guys to watch film, gathering guys to go out to California. You, you don't do that when you're one of five. You know, that's probably as much as anything is it's hard, you know, um, to do that when you're not really the guy that stands in front of them. And uh, so I think that's just evolved, you know, over time and, and his position on this team. Have time for another couple questions. Uh, let's go to Connor Riley and then Lance McCurley, please. Hey, Connor. Todd. JT had said at SEC Media Days, the biggest problem is that there's only one ball to go around. How do you go about solving that problem when you have as many skill players as you've listed so far today? Well, the thing is, I don't solve it. The defense solves that. I don't, I don't control where it goes. Now, we can move guys around and give them opportunities and touches. And believe me, I've been, a, I've been around skill guys my whole life. That's who I coach. And I get it. When you install plays and you go over the game plan, your real skill guys, they look at the, they look at the plays. Like, where am I going to get my opportunities? And I, I enjoy that. I would hope that we have skill guys that are selfish. I really do. What, what skill guy would you not want to be selfish and want to touch the ball? It's everything to them to showcase their skill set. But they do have to understand that my ultimate job is to score as many points as we can and not turn it over and win the game. And I'd love for every guy to touch it a bunch. But ultimately, and I want you to be selfish, but I can't worry about that as we're game planning. I have to do what I think is best for our team that gives us the best chance to win. And yet I get it. I really do. I think it stinks, you know, but that's the way it is. It's never changed. It, what's changed is people throw it more. You know, you, your game's more opened up. So you give yourself a chance to get other guys the ball. But at the end of the day, um, the biggest thing is developing your skill set. If you'll develop your skill set and you'll put on film what they want to see, Trey McKitty 
he didn't have double digit catches. The son of a gun went in the third round. So, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, I want you to touch it. I want you to score touchdowns. I, I want you to be a big part of it, but let's focus on developing of your skill set. That's going to translate to the next level and then doing everything we can in our power to create the best version of an offense we can for the university of Georgia. Hey, coach, can you hear me? Yes. Coach, we're going to shift it to Clemson. Uh, they're returning one of the most experienced and best defensive lines in the country without really giving away your game plan. How do you prepare for a unit like that? And it's facing Coach Scott's defense during Gerson's. Does that help too? Well, I, you broke up a little bit there at the end, but I think what you were saying is the Clemson defense, which obviously, let's start with this. First of all, uh, they've got a tremendous coaching staff. Brent Venables is one of the best in the country. When I was at Oklahoma State, we went against him there, and he was at Oklahoma. They do a tremendous job of creating some conflicts, some issues with you offensively, and then they've done a really good job recruiting, and then they've got some real good glue guys that are tough, outstanding football players, and with them returning a good number of players. With that being said, we go up against pretty good defense every day ourselves, so it's not as if, you know, we don't have good players going against us. Now, it may not be the same schematically. And it, they're going to pose some problems because just like we will for them, because we don't do it exactly the same, but they will have gone up against good personnel. We'll have gone up against good personnel. And the reality is eight of the last 14 years have been in the NFL. And every week you're going up against good personnel and you better strap it up and be ready to go because they've got good players and we got good players. So let's go. Well, I'm, I'm fired up you know, to see where we're at. That's why you come to Georgia to play games like this. That's why you come here to play really good people. Let's figure out where we're at, you know, how far we've come offensively. All right, we've got time for one more. Davis Baker, you want to round us out? Yeah, thank you. Uh, hey, Coach, um, just now that Zamir and James are both veterans in this program, have they been more vocal this camp period? And what are each of their individual leadership styles like? Well, neither of them are vocal. So at least not around me. Now, maybe that's just because I'm 55 and they don't feel like anything to say to me. But the reality is they're not vocal players. But those two dudes, man, they work their rear ends off, man. You you come anytime you guys ever – if you would ever have a chance to come watch our workouts in the offseason, those two guys go against each other, man, I'm telling you, they challenge each other and the whole running back room does. But those two guys – if you asked our players to the core, and Jermaine Burton said it the other day, we were doing some gassers, and all he did was go over there and run with James just to be around James because it forced him uh, in terms of his work ethic, how he competed. You challenge yourself against the best players in the room to find out where you're at, and that's not easy. You know, it's not easy. It's much easier to pick out someone that you can beat every time that you look better than, those kind of things, but ultimately it's those guys do it every single day and you know what? I rarely walk on the field and see those two guys without a smile on their face, without an unbelievable disposition of loving football and their teammates and the University of Georgia. It's so much fun being around those two guys. And uh, I'm excited to see them play this year as much as I was last year. Coach Munkin, thank you for your time today. Thanks for everybody else for tuning in.